Hi everybody, welcome back to Environmental Science Analysis with Dr. Lisa. Today I'm going to show you how to do some nonlinear curve fitting <coughs> using the, Exolve, the solver feature in Excel. So here is, uh, this is the data for the isotherm that I used in the video where I showed you how to do nonlinear curve fitting in R. <coughs> and now we're going to use this same data to do some curve fitting in Excel. And so in the interest of time, I'm kind of skipping over the linearization part, uh, but you know, we could fit to the Freundlich equation here, and here's the linear form of the Freundlich equation, and we could fit to that by taking the log of the concentration in the aqueous phase, Cw, and also the log of the concentration in the solid phase, Cs, you know, taking the log of each of these, and then just calculating the slope, right, and the intercept, right, here's the intercept, and here's the R squared value. You can do those with formulas, no problem. That gives you your N value here and your KF there. KF is just 10 to the value of the intercept. Same thing over here. You could do the Langmuir linearization by taking one over CW and one over CS. So here's your data. Uh, and then you can plot it. Here's your slope, which is uh, one over CS max times KL. It's this thing right here. Here's your intercept, which is 1 over Cs max, and based on those values, you could calculate Cs max and Kl. So that's fine. That's linear regression. I can do that in Excel. That's not a problem. How do I do a nonlinear curve fit? All right, so let's take our data, move it down here. So the first thing you want to do is, so here's the concentration in the aqueous phase, and here's your concentration in the sorbed phase. What I want to do is calculate a concentration that's in the sorbed phase that's predicted by my model, which I'm going to call Cs predicted. And if I'm doing the Freundlich equation, then I have two predictor variables here. I have n and I have kf, right? <coughs> and so let's just use the values up here. kf is about 5,000 and n is about 0.7. That's a good place to start. So similar to the NLS function in R, you do have to give uh, Microsoft Excel some place to start. You have to give it an initial guess. And the closer your initial guess is to the, the final value, the better off you're going to be. Okay, so then we're going to predict CS. We're going to use this equation, right? So CS is equal to KF times CW to the power of N. And then we just have to get our dollar signs right here. We use, I use the function F4 to put the dollar signs in place. There you go, F4. So here is our CS predicted. Okay, and you can see because we chose good values here, these are pretty close, but if, let's say we chose some crappy values here, these would be way off. And then what typically you do when you're doing curve fitting is you minimize the sum of the squared residuals, right? That's what you do when you're doing a linear regression. You can do that in nonlinear curve fitting ex as well. And there's a feature for that in Excel. I'll just start writing sum here, and you go down to here, sum x m y squared and if I click on that see it says sums the squares of the differences in two corresponding ranges or arrays so that's what I want I'm going to double click on it here's my array for x sorry this is my array for x comma array for y close parentheses boom booyah this is my sum of squared residuals and so now I can go to data Solver, if you don't have that installed, there's a video for how to do it. Uh, and I'm going to take, see, it's, I'm going to, this is the, click on the cell, right? This is the objective, and I'm going to minimize it, okay, by changing what? By changing these two variables right here, okay? And notice it's got some uh, constraints you can put here. The new version of Excel has this as an automatic thing, make the unconstrained variables non-negative. I usually, that's usually what I want to do, although there are some cases where you might want to allow this to be negative, but for now that's fine. We can allow them to be not, we don't want them to be negative, so we're going to make the variables non-negative, and you just hit solve. And boom, there you are. And you're going to get this little uh, dialog box. Do you want to keep the solution? You can also get sensitivity reports and limits and things like that. So if I click on sensitivity reports, you notice my sensitivity report has popped up here in a separate thing and it doesn't it's not very useful but if you have a more complicated model this can be more useful 
So that is an example of how you can do some nonlinear curve fitting. Notice that up here we got 0.686 as our regression. If you were paying close attention to the, the video where I did this at R, we got exactly the same value using R. When we did the linearization, when we use the nonlinear curve fitting, we get 0.699 and slight differences in KF. Okay, um, so there's other things that we could do, but let's for the for the moment let's first of all let's plot this. And uh, this is our so this orange is our CS predicted, so maybe we'll uh, format that and we will give it a line, give it the orange line because it's the orange points, and maybe get rid of the marker so we know that it's just a curve fit. So the, the blue dots now are the data and the oranges are fit and all is well and we're happy and we yay there's much rejoicing. Okay um, so this is very powerful right just calculating the sum of squared residuals means you can do you know anything you want you can have any model you want as long as you're calculating the predicted variable here you can have as many uh, coefficients as you need to be fed into your model you can do whatever you want by, by just minimizing the sum of squared residuals. Now one of the things that I talked about in the theory lecture here is that sometimes you might want to weight your data and have some data be more highly weighted than others. So here's another example of what we could do. We could put a weighting value in here and maybe for this example we would say the low concentrations down here we want to give high weights but the high concentrations we're going to give low weights. Yeah, just as an example. So let's say these are going to be fully weighted at a value of 1 and then maybe 0.5 here in the middle and maybe 0.2 and then 0.1. You know, I'm just making this up. Uh, but again, some of these values are more heavily weighted than others. Okay, so the, here's our unweighted fit. Unweighted, I can spell, unweighted. Uh, now let's do a weighted fit. So what we would do now is we would calculate our sum of our, our squared residuals. So here's our residual squared. Now because we're going to square it, it doesn't matter whether you pr whether you subtract CS minus CS predict or the other way around doesn't matter because we're going to square it. So there's our squared residuals, and then maybe we could weight our residuals. Call this the weighted residual squared by taking this residual and multiplying it by the weighting factor. Enter. Bada bing, bada boom. We have too many decimal places here, which is why it looks strange. Let's get rid of a bunch of those. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So here's our weighted residuals, and now we could sum those up. Sum of our weighted residuals. And now this is the number we're going to minimize. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, so here's just going to remember that this is our unweighted version and then we'll put our weighted version over here and we could go again, we'll have to put some numbers in here, so I'll put point 0.7 and uh, just put a thousand again, give it some dummy values to go with. Um, so these right now, uh, these cells in column O are the ones that are tied to this, okay? So actually what I should do here is I'm just going to copy and paste this. Paste. Okay, so this is actually going to be our unweighted. And we'll make the new ones our weighted ones. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back to data solver. And now I'm choosing this right here. This is a sum of our weighted residuals. And I'm going to minimize that by changing. And I move some things around, so I'm going to highlight these things again by highlighting those two. And again, I'm going to keep the non negative constraint and hit solve. Okay, and in this case, didn't really make any difference. We got exactly the same answer, uh, but in other cases, you could actually find that you get a different answer when you weight your residuals. So the point is, you can do all kinds of interesting things in Excel just using the solver. It's really beautiful, uh, and uh, you can weight your residuals. You can do all kinds of stuff in any kind of curve fitting you want in Excel without having to learn any programming at all. So, cool stuff.